Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IV. In the last episode, the Dark Knight Cecil quit his job as the King of Baron's delivery boy after his first assignment resulted in the burning of the Village of Mist. As a result of that, Cecil is now in the care of the young summoner Rydia. She's about six, seven, something like that. You know, just old enough to save the world, but still young enough to need a guardian. And that guardian is Cecil. Unfortunately, since her parents aren't around anymore, he's not going to get paid for this job, but it's, uh... Yeah, it's... Just hang in there, Cecil. You'll get there someday. It's not... It's not Captain of the Red Wings, but it's it's something. But alright, we are in the Oasis Village of Kaipo. Yep, and the underwater channel is to the northeast. But I hear that eight ferocious sea snakes guard the exit. So we have monsters in a sea channel. Or underwater channel, whatever. And this is the Oasis Town of Kaipo, deep in the Damsian Desert. Okay, so we're in the Damsian Desert. Nothing in the pots here. Ah, uh, well that's nice. Yeah, I was wondering that too. She was a girl who lived here and fell in love with a wandering bard. Those wandering bards. Her father, Master Tella, wouldn't allow them to be together, so they ran away from Kaipo. Okay, so where did they run away to? I guess you wouldn't know. Okay, so, uh, there's apparently an Anna and, uh, a Master Tella they keep an eye out for. Can we already talk to him? We have an armor shop. And a naming way, but I don't have anybody else I feel like changing the spelling of the name to, so we'll just leave him be. He's really rocking that. I want to say it's a beret, but from here it almost looks like a sombrero now. He's an interesting uh, fellow. Yeah, you know, he has, since they don't rename the characters in Final Fantasy IV for the DS, he's kind of had like his own little mini side quest thing going on. I never could finish that though because it involved a really rare drop item and I gave up on that eventually. But here we are at the armor shop. Don't really need anything because Rydia comes equipped with most of the stuff she needs, but I'm going to get a leather hat just because you never know. And on a side note, I didn't do it myself, but when you if you've played the game before and you know when plot events are going to happen, like say you're not going to have Kane in a party anymore, you can actually unequip their, their items right before the story sequence happens. So I could have sold off all of Kane's iron equipment, his spear, his helmet, armor, gauntlets, so on and so forth, shield. And you could have gotten yourself, you know, a few hundred gil for selling all that stuff. Some woman from Baron stumbled in here recently. She was taken to the neighbor's house to recover. Okay, now we have a woman from Baron. How many of those do we know? Alrighty. Sage, Tella, and his daughter Anna were living happily together, but then Anna ran away from home. I wonder why. It's because of that bard. And we have an item shop here, but I think we're good on items for right now. And there's the inn. I think you were expected to talk to this lady first since you start off at the inn after the events from the previous night. I don't think there's anything in the pots, no. Alrighty. A special Kaipo micro brew, and we need valid ID. I don't think we have an ID on us, Cecil. This isn't Baron, where everybody knows you by your faceplate. Hi, I'm a traveling scholar. I want to do research at Fabul, a town east of Damsian. But the strange old guy by the underwater channel won't let me pass. Okay, so there's an old guy that won't let people pass. I am so tempted to make a Lord of the Rings reference right now. And only the royal family of Damsian can enter the Antlion's Cave. Uh, I guess there's a lot of gems in there. And because of all the new monsters popping up everywhere, the customer turnout has been pretty low. Well, hang in there, lady. Cecil, you want to learn how to do some grilling? No. Nope. Oh, well. It's like a wood stove there. That's kind of neat. Alright, that's enough to do in the inn. Alright, let's see. There's nothing in the weapon shop we really need right now. If you're going to bring a little girl with you, you should put her in the back ranks. Okay, yeah, I demonstrated that last time, but quick go over. You hit form, which is short for formation, and you can 
relocate your party members to different slots in the menu and you do change and it flip flops the uh, setup so that you have from three in the front, two in the back row to uh, two in the front and three in the back row depending on the makeup of your party. Oh, we have a dancing girl. But she can't make it to the uh, Damsian Castle to learn how to dance there, so she wants us to watch a synchronized dance. Look at her go! Ooh, she jumped in the water. I guess that's why it's a synchronized dance. Doesn't it work better when you have more than one person, though, when it's synchronized? Well, I guess it could be synchronizing with the music, but... Okay, well, I'm not going to say anything to her again, because she'll just repeat that. Did I already check these? Nope, got an ether. And what do you have to say, mysterious, normal-looking dude? The castle to the north, Damsian, governs this print, the desert. I heard the prince has a voice of an angel. Sounds like he's a sissy. Okay, we gotta go in here. This house on the corner, it's not inconspicuous at all. A girl from Baron collapsed right outside this village. She was delirious with fever and kept calling out, Cecil, Cecil. Okay, well, my gill is on it being Rosa. Rosa. I don't know. You know, she's... We're right, I'm right here. In order to cure the desert fever, you need the light of the desert. And it's a gem found only in the antlion's lair. So we need to get to the antlion's lair, but first we have to get through the underwater channel. And there's a mysterious old guy blocking away there. And that's the only cure. Then we need to find a member of the royal family of Damsian. Yeah, she says the same thing, and that's the only way we can get to the Antlion's Cave, is with uh, someone from Damsian. But alright, that's enough to do here in Kaipo. I think that's everything. So now we step out here into the desert, and looking at our levels, Riddy is level 1. She's She needs a little bit of work. I need to get her up to level 5. So we're going to do so a little bit of level grinding. This will only take like four or five minutes tops. I'll cut out any unnecessary battles. Alright, here we go. We have some a new enemy, the Hand Lager, basically a giant centipede monster. And the Sea Sahagans, which are easy to kill with the Dark Wave attack. Riddy is equipped with a rod. Her normal fight command is pretty weak, but if you use it as an item, she shoots this little uh, energy bolt out of it. That does, as I think it has perfect accuracy, and uh, it does more damage than just being on him with a rod will do. She leveled up and she learned ice. The first magic spell that wasn't the uh, the summon chocobo. It's nice that we could trust our little kids in this game with that kind of uh, power. Yeah, and these goblins are nothing, just blast them with the dark wave. Yeah, don't stray too far from the town. Riddy has got cure now, that's good. You know, you can, since I'm not going very far away from the village, I can, I can have uh, Cecil use dark wave more often. Then we have some new enemies. These can be fought in the Cave of Mist, but we just, we just didn't encounter them. The flying eyes and the Insectus. Yeah, the flying eyes. They're a weak to projectile attacks like canes, spears, and jump attack. Oh, and that's all of them. Already gained a level and she learned sight. Okay, one or two more fights should do it. And then Riddy will have reached level 5 and learned the bolt spell, which we need to. Uh, for the underwater channel. Yeah, we got a high potion from that fight. Come on, monsters. Come out wherever you are. You gotta be around here somewhere. Come on. One more fight is all I need and Riddy will level up. Yeah, jeez. Alright, 
Rydia is leveled up to level 5. She's got the bolt spell now. So I'm going to get, return to Kaipo and rest at the inn, and then we're going to head over to the underwater channel. I'll be back in just a second. Alrighty, we're back on the world map. On our way to the underwater channel. Yeah, that was a relatively easy fight. Rydia gained another level. Oh yeah, I don't think I explained it, but you can uh, change your uh, equipment, your your weapon in battle by doing the same motions that I did to use the rod as an item. You basically go into the item menu while in battle and press up to get to your uh, equipment in your hands and you click on your the rod in Rydia, Rydia's case and then go down into your menu and switch it out with a different item. You can do that in other battles. That'll, that'll be useful later on when you have elemental stuff to deal with. Yeah, I'm going to take a quick moment to save. All four slots are filled now. Yeah, I used a dark wave a few times. I'll probably have Rydia do some healing in the cave at some point. The underground underground channel south entrance. There's some treasure. And some fly killers. This is where Rydia's bolt spell comes in handy. Because fish enemies are generally weak to electricity. So bolt, thunder whatever translation you're working with. Cecil gained a level, and Rydia gained a level, and learned hold, the paraly paralyzing attack. We got a potion! And a maiden kiss. That can be very useful in this place, because there are some toad enemies that can cast the toad status on your party. So let's continue on. And there's a mysterious looking owl person. Is that like Kebora Gabora from uh, Ocarina of Time? Probably not. Alright. You shall not pa Oh. You wield the dark sword? Please help me. What's the problem? My daughter was tricked by a bard and went, right out, went off to Dem's Inn. And I sense great evil near there. Then you are the sage Tella. I am Tella. I was heading to Dabzian, but there's a powerful monster up in the lake. I cannot defeat him with my magic alone, but with your dark sword, I might be able to defeat him. Oh, this girl is a summoner, isn't she? Quite gifted, I sense. The three of us might stand a chance. We also have to go to Dabzian. Then it's decided. Let's go to Dabzian. Sage, Tella, join the party! Cecil is moving up in the world. He's a caretaker for a little girl and an old man now. So let's switch that formation and put that old guy in the back row because he is fragile. I don't know, osteoporosis or something. Something like that. Yeah, his defense is abysmal. And uh, he's also the reason why I bought that leather hat back in Kaipo. It's a little bit of a boost to his defense and magic defense. I didn't buy an iron ring because we'll find one in the in this tunnel like in just a couple minutes. But, but yeah, Sage Telly's level 20, but don't get too excited. He's good right now, but you know, if you see him later in the game, he's probably not going to be all that useful. I mean, he's useful, but he's really uh, limited. And uh, if you're playing a DS version, his stats actually decrease sometimes when he levels up. It's, uh... I don't know, it has something to do with him being an old guy, I guess. Okay, we have some new enemies. The Feng Shell and the Sea Pot. You want to defeat the Sea Pot first. Because it, like, replenishes its HP or something after it's been uh, after all the fang shells are dead I don't quite understand it but we got those out of the way don't worry too much about using your MP at this point because we'll be replenishing that shortly all right we have a bomb fragment basically it's an item that casts a weak fire spell 
Like somewhere like stronger than fire one, weaker than fire two, depending on what character uses it. Got the iron bangle. Okay, we're gonna give that to Tella. Because he could use that. Iron bangle. Alright. We're wandering through the water. There's one more thing I wanna find down here. Yeah, we got Jigen Toads. Or yeah, I guess it's Jigen Toads. These guys are weak to the ice spell. Yeah, don't bother with Bolt. The ice is what you want to use on these guys. And there we go. If you leave them alone for too long, they'll cast a Toad spell on your parties and your party members, and that makes things a little bit difficult. We have a waterfall here and a secret passage into a hidden room. We got an X potion, a dry ether, and a phoenix down, and those are always nice. But yeah, that's like, those are like in-game items. Like X potion, I think, heals your party member to full HP, and dry ether heals a lot of MP. We have zombies. It's our first strike at least, so we were at the advantage, but Cecil is not particularly useful against them. I'm gonna have Rydia defend because she does not have the fire spell for some reason. Now let Tella cast the fire spell, because undead enemies are generally weak to fire attacks. Now just have her defend again. Uh, and Tella also has the uh, remember command. It's I don't really ever use it, but it basically randomly goes through a, a spell that he's once known that he's long since forgotten. I think it still uses the MP up too, so it's not like just like a free casting of the spell or anything. Which reminds me, I probably should show you what he has. Yeah, for white magic he has Cure 2, Esuna, which is a, a status recovery spell. The Life spell, which is good for reviving, you know, fallen party members. Confuse. Blink, which uh, increases your evade temporarily. And Teleport, which is used for escaping uh, dungeons. Pretty useful. And for Black Magic, he has Fire, Ice, and Bolt, and the Stop spell, which is like a paralysis kind of thing. It's like it functions the same way as paralysis, but it's not exactly the same. I don't know. And Osmos, which uh, steals MP from the target. Alrighty, let's get out of this water and back on the main path. You don't want to swim around in your armor, Cecil, it'll rust. I love this dungeon theme, it's one of my favorites in the series. And we're into the basement floor too. And we picked up a potion from those fly killers. Okay, Rydia's all out of MP now, but that'll be alright. We're going to be reaching a save point shortly. Go over this way. And we've got another potion. Oh, we got a lucky mallet from that battle. That, that uh, reverses the effects of the mini status ailment, which basically turns your... Uh, party member into a tiny little person that has like does only one point of damage per physical attack there, okay yeah, there is a chest over here got another ether for restoring MP okay, I'm gonna save those alrighty that was another fang pot sea or fang shell sea pot combo nothing in that rock We got a mysterious room. All right, let's rest here. If we rest on top of this magic rune, a force field will surround us that monsters can't enter. We can rest here in a tent or cottage and save our game. I think he's senile. What is he talking about saving games? We're on a quest to save the world. In pre preparation for tomorrow's battle, let's rest in my tent and heal our wounds. Yay! We're having a camp out. 
And we're setting the save point on fire. Fast asleep already? Must have been an exhausting day for one so young. Is this girl? She's a summoner for mist. I sense great potential within her. She could become quite a gifted sorceress. Such a peaceful face. So much like Anna when she was a child. Anna is... My only daughter. She eloped to Dempsey and with a bard because I couldn't, wouldn't consent to their marriage. Why are you going there? Yeah, let's change the subject. That's a little awkward. A friend of mine in Kaipo has an extremely high fever. So you're after the light of the desert. Without that, there's not much hope. What is this, the monster in this cavern? It's a huge creature with eight legs. In order to save Anna and your friend, we've got to beat it first. I hope this horrible feeling I have about damp scene is just my imagination, but... And he's trailing off. Alright, let's go. Next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy IV, we will continue on through the underwater channel and fight our way past the monster of eight legs and make our way to Damsian to save Rosa and figure out what's going on with Anna and the Bard. Alright, this has been Phoenix Down. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.